Today we are going to three different tapas bars and trying over 10 different types of tapas and drinks. I've been in Barcelona for three years now and I'm sharing the two best tapa bars in the city while also exploring to see what's new. Because <gasps> there's always something exciting around every corner. One of the best places to have tapas, drinks in Barcelona, I swear. And it's called Cabo Bar. And there are actually three in the city. But the vibe here is a lot cooler, in my opinion. So to start off, we both got claras. And it's a super popular drink here, especially in Barcelona and Catalonia. And so a clara is basically just half Spanish beer and half lemonade or like a soda limon. Lemon soda. And it's so good. It basically tastes like a rattler. You know, behind every influencer, there's a hungry, impatient boyfriend waiting to eat their food. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Can I eat now? No. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. He's munching on a chicken croqueta, which is known to be super Spanish. But what you might not know is that they were brought from France and are typically cooked at home to use up the leftovers. Hmm. Next up are a countrywide favorite you'll find on every menu. It's the same really, the same menu. Yeah? Same menu. All over Spain you will find patatas bravas. In my opinion, the bravas here are the best. And for those of you who don't speak Spanish, patatas bravas basically translates to upset potatoes. <laughs> Now, these did originate in Spain. They came from Madrid in the 1500s after the Spanish conquered the Inca Empire. One thing I'll never understand is how they managed to conquer so many countries, but nowadays can't heat an apartment in winter. Maybe that's just the upset potatoes talking. The so is telling me that the croqueta that I ordered, an ink-filled octopus that shit itself. That just makes me not want to eat it. <laughs> it's actually good. I'm gonna like it. It's fishy. Yeah, not a fan of the chiperon croqueta. It's a bit fishy for my liking. Just like that, it's all gone. <laughs> We just left Cabo Bar. It's a total of 15 euros. So the breakdown of that was 250 per clara, 5 euros for the bravas, and well, the rest was the croquetas. <laughs> the server had a thing for Juanpi's. She didn't look at me once. Not once, just at him the whole time. My honey. We are now leaving the Fort Pienc. Marina area heading towards Arc de Triomphe. You could walk the same route every day and every day you'd see something new. I swear. We are now entering Bourne. Oh, there's a market. <gasps> Hooray. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find. Our next stop is very authentic. It's across the city, so we need a tactical stop first. And there's a funny unwritten rule that no one tells us foreigners. Well, okay, someone eventually told me. It's super weird if you order a coffee with your meal. Apparently it's supposed to be at the end, but if you know me, I will drink it when I want anyways. Any excuse to go against the status quo, right? So we found like a nice new little place. That's something I love about Barcelona is there's such a huge coffee culture here and there's tons of these little holes in the walls, these cute little places. So this one's called Coto and I've got a Cortado. Ooh, with ironically, with coffee from Colombia. My cameraman is from Colombia. <laughs> How many different ways can you order coffee in Spain? There's espresso, cortado, café con leche. There's a thousand. I know. Largo, corto, what else? manchado. Manchado is the España yeah. or Colombia? No, baby. Okay, in well, Colombia you only have café con leche or tinto. <laughs> or tinto. That's it. Yeah. So it's at least 10. Yeah. That's crazy. How was your coffee? Bitter. Like my soul. <laughs> Give this woman one coffee. <laughs> yeah, I was a little bit like low in animal and now I'm like, goose, bubbles. <laughs> and I'm not even finished. <laughs> 
Okay, so fun fact about those green parrots. They're like little parakeets. My friend Aymara, she actually told me that they're birds from Argentina and they brought them over as pets and now they're like considered an invasive species. <laughs> so they're everywhere, breeding like crazy. Ah, uh, you could totally climb up there. This is the Roman wall and the defense towers. And as Juanpa just said off camera, it's crazy because now there's people living in apartments there. I think it's expensive to live there. I bet you they have great insulation. Can you tell it's been a cold winter? We've made our way all the way to the Barceloneta area. We're at Periquete. It's like a super duper Spanish place. It's one of my favorites in Barcelona. We've got, what is this called? Pimiento de Padron? Pimiento al Padron. Al Padron. They're basically those little green peppers, but with a bunch of salt. They are really good. It's so nice to have Juanpi back. He was gone for work and like a little holiday, a surf holiday for like three weeks. And so finally he's back. I'm crying over here behind the camera. It's really cool to like explore the city and kind of make up our own little food tour here. Gracias. No food tour would be complete without having a vermouth. Cheers. Join us. And we've got some pan con tomate, which is super <laughs> duper Catalan. They cut a garlic and then they rub it on the toasted bread. Put tomato, olive oil on top, and sprinkle a little salt. It's one of my favorites. I think I just love bread. So, redemption for croquetas. Croqueta de bacalao. So good. So creamy. It tastes a bit cheesy, but there's no cheese. Mm. <laughs> wait, wait. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> You can get a whoops, a vermouth with an orange or an olive. Personally, I prefer the olives. The cool thing about the fruit is that it kind of like soaks up the flavor of the vermouth. But it's very nice. Tapas don't keep you full for long, so it's on to the next place. I think that was the best bang for our buck. We got all that, so three drinks, all that food, 2160 or something like that. And so we go back into the labyrinth to see what we can find. Always remember to look up, especially in the born and Gothic areas. We are in La Font de las Muses. Muses? I don't know. I think it's like the Fountain of the Muses. I'm guessing that's what the translation is. But it's a super duper Catalan restaurant. We just found it walking down, exploring the different alleys in Bourne. We've got some chicken wings, which I guess Wamp is gonna enjoy. <laughs> and then we've got some tortilla de normally patate, but this one is bacalao. And that's just like a, a codfish. This looks like a special kind of bread. Oh, I think it's got olives in it. Mm, looks amazing. Oh my gosh, you can see the chunks of fish. It's nice and salty. It's like perfectly salted and super fluffy. I'm mm, very juicy. It's not dry at all. Alright, I don't know why, but I always like to put my food on top of the bread like this. Does anybody else do this? Is it just me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more men. <laughs> Thank you. 23 euros. Now we're back exploring through Bourne. Oh, what's this? It was starting to get dark and a storm was coming. You'll see what I mean at the end. So we knew we only had one place left and it was between a tried and true or something new. You're spilling everywhere. Uh. <laughs> 
you're such a mess. <laughs> Good. Oh, so we had this plan to go to this fancy cocktail bar that won an award last year, but instead we ended up at this little market. And this is what I love about Barcelona. We just tried this amazing beer from Tibidabo Brewing. I don't know how we've never heard of it before, but we found it just by chance. So cool. <laughs> and it's so good. Oh. We ended up having a chat with Peter, who is super passionate about his shop called Virtuos de Enough. And the cherry on top is that it's a local shop. That's what we need more of in our world. Buying local, eating local. <sighs> the smell of churros in the air on a nice Sunday evening. What day? What? <laughs> you having fun? Yeah. <laughs> People looking at us. Is that why you're giggling? <laughs> Do you feel awkward? No, but she kept looking at us. <laughs> it's been a really great day. And I love like discovering new things, trying new things. And that's something that you can always do here in Barcelona. And right now, I can't actually travel because there's lots of things going on. I kind of talked about it in the last video, but it kind of feels like if you go to a different part of Barcelona, you get that experience. It feels like you are traveling. This is probably gonna be it for the night because it's getting dark and it's getting kind of chilly. And there's kind of a weather warning that it's gonna be potentially snowing. So thanks for being here, my friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.